Welcome back. South African anti-apartheid veteran William Madikizela Mandela has been discharged from hospital after being treated for a kidney infection. A spokesperson for the Mandela family said the ex-wife of late President Nelson Mandela was going back home to rest and fully recuperate from the short illness. Winnie Medicazella Mandela was admitted to Johannesburg's Mill Park Hospital around 10 days ago. She's also been in and out of hospital since 2016 for back and knee surgery. During her ex-husband's 27-year imprisonment for his fight against apartheid, Ms. Mandela campaigned for his release and the rights of black South Africans undergoing arrests and banishment. The medical charity Doctors Without Borders says the health system in the Central African Republic is almost non-existent as a result of the civil war. It reports that access to health care is extremely difficult due to regular attacks on medical facilities, patients and ambulances. MSF has been attacked on average three times a month, making it one of the world's most dangerous places for humanitarian workers. After more than five years of ethnic and religious-based violence, more than a quarter of the population have been left homeless. Well, continued conflict in many areas of South Sudan, including its environs, has left uh, several schools shut and seen millions of students unable to return to learning for up to five years. According to the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF, 72% of children are out of school, making the country rank low in education among African nations. The world's youngest nation, which gained independence in 2011, wishes and only hopes for a lasting peace. This primary school lies abandoned in Bangolo, a remote area in the southwestern region of South Sudan. When fighting broke out in 2013, many of the country's schools were shut down. An estimated 2 million children of primary school age are out of school due to the ongoing violence across the country. School enrollment, which was 42% at the start of the war, has nosedived. Our school is, I've got no items and no everything in school. So our children are sitting at home because there is no teaching for them. Heavy military presence in the area has seen teachers and students flee over time in fear of their safety. A cessation of hostilities agreement signed late last year prohibits the occupation of schools. Now, local authorities in the area promise the schools like this one will soon be reopened. By February they go back to school. This is a very good school behind me here. There's eight classrooms and desks. Uh, the children have not been going to the school for the last three years, which is very, very bad. As I said, uh, myself, I read here, I studied here before I went out, so I wanted the schools, the children here, to also benefit from here. The United Nations Mission in South Sudan, UNMIS, regularly conducts patrols to assess the security situation in affected areas. Such patrols gave a chance for teams to monitor the impact of conflict on communities and allow them meet with various armed groups while asking for peace agreements to be upheld. Let us give chance for the peace to prevail this time. And it should be durable peace, not just today and tomorrow, another war. No, it's not, a, we don't want to break, but we want a sustainable peace to come back to South Sudan. Though tens of thousands have been killed and one-third of the country's 12 million population out of their homes creating Africa's largest refugee crisis, there is light at the end of the tunnel for peace for the world's youngest nation. The Moroccan kaftan is not just a fashionable item of clothing, it also contributes to the country's handicraft exports and employs thousands of workers. Officials say the government brings in 32 million dirhams each year, and that's nearly $3.5 million. Take a look. From the catwalks to international celebrities, the kaftan has gained a worldwide following. In Morocco, the garment's popularity means a thriving business for exports. Traditional clothing in Morocco makes up 16% of the country's handicraft exports. 
The Moroccan traditional quilt represents 16% of the total exports of our handcrafts. I believe that this figure is very important. What are we doing for this sector? Among the measures we take is its presence at national and international exhibitions. Kaftan enjoys international appeal, having been worn by U.S. former First Lady Michelle Obama during a visit to Morocco in 2016. Actress Meryl Streep was also seen in one on the occasion. This sector is very important because it employs more than 75,000 traditional craftsmen and its turnover is estimated at more than 32 billion Moroccan dirhams. Its exports reach 32 million dirhams. In traditional sewing, we generally work by item. A two-piece traditional tachita for a woman will take at least two months of work because it needs lots of decorations and jewelry fixing. Away from the glamour, thousands of workers make the garment with hands in old cities such as Fes, Rabat and Marrakech, taking up to two months to make one piece. Miss Universe, a South African self-defense trainer, Demi Lee Mel Peters, returns home with a special message for women, empowerment. Her message is timely at a time South Africa is described as a country with one of the world's highest rates of violent crimes and a string of grisly murders of women and children. 22-year-old Demi Lee Nell Peters and former Miss South Africa, who was crowned Miss Universe in November last year, spent time in Soweto with women from two NGOs working with women to spread the message of empowerment. Nell Peters helps train women in self-defense and has been promoting her own initiative called Unbreakable to train women on how to handle situations including various forms of assault, toxic relationships and sexual harassment. This is about giving the woman an option, an option to, to decide to get away, to decide to, to not go to that destination that she knows is dangerous, to decide to not talk to people on Facebook, to make the choice to get herself out of that violent relationship that she is in. So it's not about self-defense. Yes, the, she, the, the females that attend the course get, get taught um, one skill, and that is to punch somebody in the throat. Um, but the whole course is not just surrounded by um, self-defense. It's about giving women an option. Nell Peters says her passion for self-defense was reinforced when she was hijacked and held at gunpoint about a month after winning her title as Miss South Africa. South Africa has one of the world's highest rates of violent crime. The numbers on rape of women and children are so high that women's rights campaigners charge that sexual violence has almost lost the power to shock. A social worker for PUSH, Priscilla Kahwe, herself a victim of abuse, says many women go through various unimaginable challenges before they take a step to ask for help. I have a, a fiance who used to abuse me, will not come to my to the house that where we were staying, had an affair three blocks from where I'm staying. So I was also infected with HIV through the things that he was doing. So the question was, because I was down, you know, bedridden, it was during the time where there was no ARVs and everything. So being the breadwinner, you know, and then at the end of the day, abusing me emotionally, having the baby, I had to choose what is it? Am I going to stay, stay in this abusive relationship or go out? So I decided to say, I can't change anything, so the only thing is to go out. A string of murders of women and children in South Africa last year sparked outrage and outcry. President Jacob Zuma called the violence a national crisis. Give a low, but don't punch the person in front of you. <laughs> A crucial and very important message for women all around the world. Well, that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.